introduced you to a North Tonawanda family worried about their health. They live yards away from the Niagara Sanitation Landfill, which once housed waste from Love Canal. Well, tonight we're hearing from another resident who says the state is not doing enough to keep their neighborhood safe. Jen Shines has this follow-up and a News 4 Investigate special report. A quick drive along Forbes Street and you'll see people there want answers. The residential street is lined with toxic waste signs. Corey D'Augustino's is probably the biggest. A few years ago, he learned the Niagara Sanitation Landfill was to be classified as a Superfund site. Since then, he says the state's done little to ease his mind or protect his family's health. They'll drive by, take the sign down. Um, I'm not going to take the sign down until I'm, I'm fully convinced. Convinced that toxic chemicals aren't inside his home. Corey D'Augustino is certain there are. He's lived on Forbes Street in North Tonawanda for 12 years. Back then, he had no idea the landfill behind his property would become a Superfund site. It once housed toxic love canal waste. I would have never bought my home. I don't think anybody would have. The waste has since been removed, but many residents, including D'Augustino, believe toxic chemicals have migrated onto their properties and over the years seeped into their homes. The state DEC and the Department of Health say that's not the case. Here's D'Augustino's attorney, Michael Stagg. Well, I think one of the discrepancies is, is that they haven't investigated all the pathways. We believe that this material is coming in through the groundwater. I have a daughter, 13-year-old daughter. My oldest son, he's, you know, he's got health issues. My daughter has health issues. My wife, I do. We spoke to one of D'Augustino's neighbors in August. Sarah Krause, who moved to Forbes Street from Love Canal in the early 80s, has also been plagued with health issues. She had a tumor removed in 2012. It was a one-pound tumor. It had entangled all of my reproductive organs, so I ended up with a full hysterectomy. Like the Krauses, D'Augustino's concerns are only heightened by the gunk he finds in his basement. It comes out of the sides here, and I don't mess with it. The lawyers, everybody says to stay away from it. Get out. Well, I can't get out of the house. That's what they keep on telling me. Along with the Krauses, he's part of a class action lawsuit against the town of Wheatfield and the companies that dumped their waste in the landfill years ago. Eventually, the town of Wheatfield had this chain link fence put up around the site in an effort to keep people off the property. D'Augustino wants a sign along the fence warning people that they're walking near a potentially toxic Superfund site. Right now, there's not one. My son used to hunt back there, fish back there. There's ponds back there that would never freeze in January, February. December, there's ponds back there. It never froze, and it was like a yellow, was, the, the pond looked yellow. His attorney did private testing inside his home and of his backyard soil. What we found was chemicals that are related to that landfill and are consistent with Love Canal waste. We found dioxins, uh, PCBs, and pesticides. D'Augustino wants the state DEC or the Department of Health to test inside his home, something both agencies have refused to do so far, noting that previous tests done outside show the landfill is not contaminating private property. Until I, until I see them come inside and test the inside of our homes, then I would be satisfied to get the results. I want them to come in and test the inside of our home. They will not, he says. Since naming the Niagara Sanitation Landfill a Superfund site, the DEC has conducted surface testing on the outside of D'Agostino's property. And what did the DEC tell you about that surface testing? It was low levels of PCBs, low levels. We just don't have all of the DEC's testing. For some reason, they haven't released everything to us. They sold us they were going to have it many, many months ago, and we still don't have the testing that they did. We don't have the reports. We reached out to the Department of Health again. A spokesperson told us the DOH has, quote, reviewed extensive data collected by DEC and confirms that as contamination has not migrated off-site onto private properties, interior testing is not warranted. It's horrible. It's heartbreaking as a father to see my daughter. It's, it's disgusting. It really is. That, that hurts me. That hurts me. I'm sorry. You'll see a few for sale signs on Forbes Street, but D'Augustino, like the Krauses, won't sell his home on moral grounds. He says he doesn't want another family to deal with this. The state says it's holding an informational meeting for residents on this very issue, the date of which has yet to be determined. Jen Schantz, News 4.